Hi everybody, today I'm here to talk about Stacks and how the Stacks blockchain works with the Bitcoin blockchain to enable Bitcoin DeFi and other smart contracts. This has been a really fascinating kind of foray down how it works, uh, the consensus mechanism and everything else. So I uh, hope you enjoy what we're about to dig in on. Uh, before we begin, I want to give a shout out to my sponsors, Ledin. Ledin is the best, best place to lend out your Bitcoin and earn a yield or borrow against it. Full disclaimer, I personally use it but know that you are taking risk when you go use this product. All right, let's go ahead and get back to Bitcoin DeFi with Stacks. So I'm gonna switch over to my screen. And I first write about this in the Held Report. The Held Report is a newsletter that I send out every Thursday. And um, this one was a ton of fun to write up on because I got to dive in, check out all the different tools that for the Stacks blockchain. Uh, I got to talk to the Stacks founders, Munib. And um, you know, it was, it was a ton of fun digging in on this. All right. So the week before, a couple of weeks ago, I wrote up an article on Bitcoin DeFi, uh, around DeFi in general. So what does DeFi stand for? DeFi stands for decentralized finance. Now a lot of this activity has been happening over on Ethereum. I think that Bitcoin is the better blockchain to build on due to a lot of different reasons. Uh, this is also echoed by Elise Kailin. Elise is a really well-known Bitcoin VC in the space. Uh, I've known her since 2013 era, so she's been around a long time. And she thinks about it as of like, you've got to build uh, DeFi on top of the most stable foundation possible. And the most stable foundation in terms of Lindy effect, Lindy is like network effect and longevity, uh, volume, uh, security model, that's going to be the Bitcoin blockchain. So I don't, I agree with her as well. And that's why I'm excited to explore these, start these different technologies, starting with stacks. Um, and I also started with Stacks because I pulled my my users on Twitter, or my sorry, my followers on Twitter, and they felt that Stacks was the most interesting project to hear about. So that's uh, that's why I'm covering it first. And a little bit of a disclaimer: um, I just hold Bitcoin. I don't recommend any owning any other token. Um, but in order to explore some of these, and because I didn't want to risk my own capital, I've been given um, you know a little bit of coins to play around with, and you'll see that in some of the screenshots. Um, okay, cool. So what is Stacks? Well, Stacks is actually a couple different things uh, over the years. It started in 2013, 2014, way back uh, when with Munib Ali and uh, Ryan Shea. And they tried to figure out how to build smart contracts on top of Bitcoin. Now, I have an interview with Munib that I thought about splicing in here, but I actually think it might be better on its own. So when I talked to Munib, you know, when they experimented with uh, building smart contracts on Bitcoin, they actually tried a couple different things. Uh, they tried working with the op return uh, field. They they worked with um, you know actually having DeFi you know basically every single transaction on the Bitcoin chain having that be uh, you know incorporated into some sort of smart contract functionality, which they found to be kind of like prohibitively expensive due to uh, you know the expensive and on chain Bitcoin transaction and those fees rising over time. So they've tried a lot of different things to make Bitcoin DeFi work. And so what is Stacks? Well, Stacks is an, a layer one blockchain, so it's a separate blockchain that uses Bitcoin for you know, trust and record keeping. So it's kind of rooted or anchored into the Bitcoin blockchain. And uh, the way that Stacks works is the demand for smart contracts uh, increases the transactional demand uh, via on, on the Bitcoin blockchain. And so this is through the proof of transfer mechanism, which actually brings... Uh, you know, there's a very fortuitous sort of relationship here where the, where there's a, a you know, with Stacks rooting itself into the trust and security and Lindy of the Bitcoin blockchain and the Bitcoin blockchain receiving transaction fees or demand for block space, which increases its security over time. So the way that, and I pulled this visualization from, uh, uh, from one of their visuals, um, they kind of think of Bitcoin as this strong, sturdy foundation, Stacks being built on top of that. And then other things that can be, in, be enabled like in Web3, you know, on top of the Stacks blockchain. Okay, so why Bitcoin? Why choose to build Bitcoin? Uh, why did choose to build Stacks on, on Bitcoin? Lindy, I covered this a little bit ago. Bitcoin has been around the longest. It's the most recognizable asset. It's got the deepest pool of liquidity, the num most number of institutions, retail traders that believe in it. Um, and then, yeah, to the asset part, Bitcoin is the highest market capitalization, volume, and trading infrastructure, and has a, and the deepest trading infrastructure for any cryptocurrency. It is considered to be a store of value, uh, even by legacy institutions. 
And then finally, stability. So Bitcoin uh, really take the Bitcoin community and the Bitcoin core development team, which is comprised of, of hundreds of folks, they all take pride in the fact that Bitcoin is slow to change. This is good because when you're building the financial system, you don't want to build it on a constantly changing foundation. You want to build it on something that's going to be around a long time. And so I think that's a really big distinction here versus like the Ethereum blockchain, other blockchains that are constantly changing. You can trust that the Bitcoin blockchain won't change very often. And it's really hard to make changes happen. So that's a good thing as well, because when you make changes happen, you introduce attack vectors. New technology means that there's new game theoretic attack vectors. There's new ways to influence the protocol. With Bitcoin, that's very, very difficult to do. And they came up with this nice visualization to uh, kind of show that off. All right. So how does it work? Well, there's it gets a little confusing here in terms of mining and proof of transfer. Essentially, um, the way that the Stacks blockchain sort of anchors itself to the Bitcoin blockchain is via Stacks. There's like a lot of transactions going on, but then they only touch one. Bit, they only go into one Bitcoin block. So you can see this anchor block essentially going into one Bitcoin transaction, and so the entire all of this information is is conveyed in that one transaction, that hash that's put in the Bitcoin blockchain. So. Um, what that means ultimately is that Stacks is rooted into the Bitcoin blockchain in terms of taking states of their chain and anchoring that into the Bitcoin blockchain. And the way that um, what's really interesting in terms of how the mining works is to incentivize mining, uh, miners receive freshly minted Stacks tokens. Um, so Stacks is the native token of the, of the Stacks blockchain. Um, and so this visualization goes through how that works. So miners, in order to, because uh, the way that Stacks works is it's a, a modified proof of burn system. Proof of burn is would be miners provably burning some sort of proof of work currency, and then they receive that native token in, in response. Um, and instead of instead of that happening, so here you can kind of see the process where miners transfer Bitcoin in a, pr a typical proof of burn function. Um, Instead of that happening, uh, you know, in these miners, who are, whichever one receives the block reward gets new stacks. Um, but instead of that happening, they have something called a proof of transfer system. So proof of transfer takes that, um, you know, those coins that would have otherwise been burnt and transfers them to stackers. So stackers are hodlers of the stacks blockchain and they receive Bitcoin as a yield for holding on to stacks. And so that's where it's a little bit confusing. It took me some time to kind of get my head around this because you can earn a yield a yield of Bitcoin from holding stacks. Now, this is not a yield on top of your Bitcoin. To be clear, you're holding another token. Um, but what they're doing is they're the essentially the miners are bidding to become the leader uh, and to win a block reward. And from bidding BTC, that BTC gets transferred over to stackers. Um, and then uh, they they receive the newly minted stacks. So that's how that, that system works. So it's a combination of a proof of burn system combined with an incentive model to incentivize folks to get into stacks, which I thought was pretty clever. Um, instead of provably burning the Bitcoin, which at some date I think they might, they're not sure yet uh, based on my conversation with Munib, it sounded like they could keep this mechanism going on for a long time. But instead of provably, provably burning it, they transfer that value to these stackers to incentivize people to get into stacks. So I thought that was a pretty clever um, incentive model. So, uh, and then I'll go ahead and cover stacking a little bit later in a more in depth in terms of how that works, because uh, I tried out a couple different tools myself. Um, you now, when we look at the token and issuance schedule, so Stacks is the native token to the Stacks protocol, uh, the Stacks 2.0 blockchain. They call it 2.0 because Stacks, a lot of its functionality didn't exist back until in January this year. So in terms of the development, the number of applications, they're all there's all quite a. <laughs> they didn't have a lot of time to build these applications, so um, they're just now kind of getting up to speed on all the DeFi and DApp um, work that can be built on top of Stacks. So these are some of the metrics behind the issuance schedule. I think this is important to highlight because Bitcoin's had such a fair distribution that we should evaluate all, of, all, all other distributions based on that. But if you want to read more, you can dig in here. <clears throat> in terms of its smart contract functionality, which I'll get into some of the uh, details in a minute, um, the basics around this is that 
uh, you know, essentially uh, on the Stacks blockchain, this is all coded up in Clarity. Now, Clarity was chosen because it offers a more secure and transparent um, a sort, of, sort of system or environment for running smart contracts versus Ethereum Solidity, which doesn't have that functionality. Um, Clarity smart contracts are kind of cool because they can look at the Bitcoin blockchain. And if something happens on the Bitcoin blockchain, then it can uh, trigger certain activities on the Stacks blockchain. So you can think of the Stacks blockchain looking at the Bitcoin blockchain and it can, and it can react to it. And I'll walk you through an example of how a smart contract like that would work. Before we continue, I want to give a shout out to CryptoTag. CryptoTag is the most secure place to store your Bitcoin. This is what I personally use. It's a uh, titanium plate, crush proof, waterproof, fireproof. This is where you write your 12 to 24 word backup. So if you lose your hardware wallet, this is how you restore it. Definitely recommend it. Check them out. Okay, back to stacks, back to some of the applications that I checked out. So some of the applications I checked out, I checked out btc.us. btc.us is a place where you can register .btc domains. This is very similar to the .eth domain registration um, in terms of popularity. And uh, it's a, one of the more popular dApps that they have. So you can add uh, any word here, like, um, you know, you can type in like, you know, Danimal. See if you get, uh, looks like that's available. <laughs> so you get danimal.btc. And then you can go ahead and register that and get it registered on the Stacks blockchain, um, which that's, I think, a pretty fun, popular uh, sort of uh, dApp that people can check out. Um, and stacking, I would say, is the most popular, like out of all of them, like these two are the most popular things to do. So stacking is that process I talked about before where you hold on to Stacks and you receive a yield in Bitcoin. Um, there's two different ways that I checked it out. One was Xverse. So let's see, this is the Xverse wallet. Xverse wallet's a mobile wallet where you can, uh, you put stacks in there and then you can choose to participate in the uh, stacking process, which you can do non-custodial and custodial. So with Xverse, it's a delegate, it's a delegated staking, which means it's still non-custodial, but it's not, you're not directly, um, you're not, essentially you're not doing it on your own. You have to pool your funds together with other stakers in this delegated fashion uh, to do the stacking process. Um, it's a little bit slow, so the process happens X number of Bitcoin blocks. Uh, stack uh, The Stacks universe operates in Bitcoin time. So uh, because of that, uh, well, not because they operate in Bitcoin time, but because of the length that they've chosen to for the stacking process, you have to wait a little while to, to participate. Um, as you can see here, had a little bit of stacks. Um, there was a, a little bug in the in the Xverse tool, not not the Stacks protocol, and so I had to wait. I had to redo it again, uh, so I don't have a screenshot of it being in progress. But next time I I talk about Stacks, I'll show that. There's also Stacks Wallet. The Stacks Wallet was really great. Um, I thought it was a fantastically simple and beautiful tool. Um, kind of your quintessential Bitcoin wallet. Um, you can, within here, there's all sorts of ways to, uh, you know, it's, it's a very simple interface. Uh, you can choose when, like how to, uh, do delegated staking or staking direct or not, st sorry, staking, uh, stacking or, uh, stacking directly. So that was a really simple tool. Um, so you can just stack in a pool or stack by yourself. And that's how they uh, visualize this there. It was really a really, really simple, um, really, really simple tool to use. Um, Arcadico. I've spent a lot of time trying to pronounce this name. Arcadico is a new project. Uh, so Arcadico is a project that just came out a few months ago. It's essentially trying to build a stable coin, um, crypto collateralized stable coin. So kind of like a maker, maker DAO for the Stacks protocol. Now, there was something really cool here that Muneeb talked about and that finally I, I finally got to understand after talking to him further around how a smart contract works where it observes the Bitcoin blockchain. So whether you're using Arcadico and their um, their algorithmic stablecoin or a centralized stablecoin like USDC, either way, let's talk about an example of how this would work. So on Stacks, you'd have a USD balance of $70,000. Um, and so that'd be $70,000 you have on chain, let's say uh, that it's USDC, and you wanna borrow one Bitcoin. $35,000 equivalent value. So a lender would enter into a smart contract with you on the Stacks protocol that monitors the Bitcoin blockchain. 
on the Bitcoin blockchain, the lender would transfer you one Bitcoin on the Bitcoin blockchain to an address of your choosing, so a wallet that you control on the Bitcoin blockchain. Now, if you miss a payment, so let's say the payments are on the Bitcoin blockchain, the Stacks protocol can monitor the Bitcoin blockchain and look for uh, payments going to a certain address for the to the lender. Uh, is the borrower paying back the lender in terms of, are they paying them back in terms of interest or if it's... Uh, or they have to have principal payment at a certain time. Um, or let's say uh, the price of Bitcoin um, goes up dramatically, so they get margin called. Um, so in that pricing data of the price of Bitcoin to dollars is piped into the Stacks protocol. Uh, then based on the, the Stacks smart contract, the US uh, dollars, which is the collateral, the USDC can be seized or transferred automatically to them based on these certain conditions. So essentially, uh, the Bitcoin protocol doesn't know that any of this is going on a Stacks protocol, but Stacks is observing the Bitcoin protocol and can make uh, smart contracts that uh, act based on behavior going on in the Bitcoin blockchain. So as I mentioned before, the Stacks is technically Stacks 2.0. So Stacks only became functional really early 2021. And there's a couple, these are the couple DeFi applications that exist now. Uh, there's a bunch of other ones too. These are some other ones that other uh, other folks recommended to me. Um, so you can go check them out from messaging NFTs to derivatives. Um, you know, in terms of in terms of uh, what's available, in, in terms of like all the different uh, all the different uh, adapts out there, you can check them out on the web, on their website. Uh, there's also some really cool things around like their accelerator. So they've got an accelerator um, that is a mentorship program for a bunch of the startups that want to build on top of the Stacks protocol. They also have Stacks Foundation, so these are more uh, these are like grants versus uh, an investment. So these are grants given to <clears throat> given to different uh, projects that are working on the protocol. Um, so you can check those out all here. So I've got the links here, and I'll include the links below on YouTube uh, to Stacking the Accelerator and Foundation. So in conclusion, I want to say I hope you enjoyed this deep dive. It's it's been a weird journey for me. I'm, I'm a Bitcoin only sort of dude, but it's been fun th learning about how we could build smart contracts on top of Bitcoin. And certainly the functionality of Stacks where it looks at the Bitcoin protocol and looks for how things uh, occur there and that can be piped back into smart contract logic. I think that's super cool. Um, also, I think that it is interesting where you have stack the uh, miners on the Stacks protocol uh, spending or transferring Bitcoin, so increasing transactional demand for Bitcoin and increasing demand for Bitcoin in general due to how the mining process works for stacks. So I think that's great and value creative to Bitcoin long term. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I, I think this is a really interesting dynamic. I've got more in the series coming out. So if you like this, definitely give me a comment or a like or a subscription. It really helps me out. And let me know what you think. Cheers. Bye.